Hey everyone, this is Tim, and this is the third of this series of videos on s tissue salts. Today we're going to talk about iron phosphate, also known as ferrum phosphate, or ferrum phosphorica, ferrum phosphoricum. Uh, most identified with anemia, uh, in the case of anemia, but also used in hemochromatosis. Ferrum phosphate normalizes iron levels, so it's good for elevated iron, and it's good for low iron. Some people make that mistake, and when I tell them, tell somebody that they have hemochromatosis, that they need to take an iron supplement, they pretty much freak out. But in the case of ferrum phosphate, or iron phosphate, uh, it's good for both. It takes a long time to resolve hemochromatosis. It could take as much as two years, but it will resolve it. So what is iron phosphate used for in the body? And it's a lot of things, actually. Uh, it's used in every cell of the body. Again, part of maintaining the ionic uh, charge and energy of every cell. Uh, but it's also used in your red blood cells. It is the carrier of oxygen throughout your body. Iron in your within your red blood cells does just that. It carries oxygen throughout your body and oxygen oxygenizes oxygenizes your body. It's, an, it's a critical part of your immune system and it combats stage one inflammation. Uh, there's three trace minerals, tissue salts, cell salts, whatever you want to call them, that combat, combat inflammation. Ferrum phosphate combats stage one. Now, one of the things I want to tell you about before we even begin, is you're going to hear me talk about ferrum phosphate being used for colds and influenza and really every type of infection. But there is one instance where that should not occur, and that is if you have a fever. If you have a fever, you should never use ferrum phosphate. It's a no-no. Anyway, let's get moving uh, through this. So let's see what, remove my glasses so I can see that far away. And for ferrum phosphate, there's two things we're, we're gonna note here. One are these blue veins around the eye. She's got one at the inside corner of her eye as well. So right away we start thinking about ferrum phosphate. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're gonna look at the lips and we see that they are very pale. If we pull apart her lips and we look at her gums, we're going to see some very light gums as well. Now, in the case of hemochromatosis, this will be the exact opposite. There will be dark, dark red lips uh, and no veins, actually. Uh, no visible veins. Actually, there's more veins over here, too. Um, but you, you'll look for the dark, very dark red lips and dark red gums in hemochromatosis. Most people with hemochromatosis know they have hemochromatosis, so... That's, that's fine. So we're going to talk about low iron for today, but I want you all to know that it can be used for hemochromatosis or elevated iron as well. So we see it here with the visible blue veins and very light lips. The skin, the gums will be very light pink as well. We'll move over to the next one. And now you're going to hear me talk when I talk about the vanity issues that rosacea or this is probably this is actually a case of acne rosacea still kind of the same thing but this is inflammation redness of the face is inflammation unless it even in the case of a sunburn it's inflammation but this is inflammation but once again right here we're seeing a blue veins we're seeing blue veins along the hairline here if we look at the other side we'd probably see it as well uh, you can't see the lips here so i i got another video Another video, sorry, another picture. And here we have, you can see the outline of the pale lips. Lots of infl inflammation going. So in the case of somebody like this who has the other signs of a iron deficiency, uh, but they also have the rosacea or great inflammation of the skin, you must recognize that the, the lips, the amount of pigmentation or color of the lips is going to be affected by the rosacea 
because it's not just it, the inflammation is not just in the skin it's in the lips as well but when you look at the outside edges of the lips you're seeing just how pale you're seeing that they're inconsistent so when there's rosacea that's present look for inconsistent pigmentation and typically the outside edge of the lips will uh, be very pale if you open up the gums you'll see very light pink gums on this individual as well now let me show you somebody without uh, low iron so we're looking and there's no visible veins nice dark pink lips but not bright red so here we have somebody without those signs again just wanting you to see the difference between so people who have a, a ferrum phosphate deficiency and those who do not this gives you that example so let's get back to the original picture now so what do we want to talk about here in as far as indications go where we're we going to start i guess because it's a phosphate one thing you must realize is that every one of the tissue salts that are a phosphate whether it's ferrum phosphate calcium phosphate sodium phosphate magnesium phosphate potassium phosphate etc they all have very profound and a very long list of behavioral or constitutional issues that will all sound a lot alike phosphates are our brain and nerve nutrients so whenever there's a phosphate deficiency you can expect some behavioral issues to accompany it but for this time i'm going to talk about vanity issues and once again pale skin we're seeing it but also rosacea can occur so when you have rosacea you really can't tell whether the skin is pale or not as we see in this example like you really can't tell you can kind of see how white she is here if i call her pasty she's probably going to kick my ass but that's fine um what she, she has very light skin but very, lots of facial rows going on so we'll come back so typically she'll have very they'll have very light skin they'll have a thinning hairline we're talking only about the vanity aspect now so that balding is possibility is a possibility um rosacea acne none present here of course it's present in uh, the other photo skin will be highly sensitive uh, and sloped eyelids now i didn't look to see no she doesn't sloped eyelids while that is a listed indication it's very rare because i don't think i've ever seen it there's one thing that can be listed as a health issue or a vanity issue uh, that i probably should talk about uh, because it's probably going to have both because it can affect one's psyche and self-confidence and that's that people with low ferrum phosphate levels a deficiency in ferrum phosphate will have eyes that kind of twitch or shudder uh shudder a little bit in involuntary flickering of the eyes not blinking like you get in magnesium or b12 but the eye the eye itself will move around um very quickly a little rapid successions uh movements of the eyes will move around uh that that's again not overly con if you, if you have that you have very low iron and we're getting into very serious health issues now we're going to talk about the health issues. you're going to save the behavioral constitutional ones for last because they're a lot like what i've talked about in the calcium phosphate in the previous video so what health issues have indications or correlations to a ferrum phosphate deficiency or can be used to correct a health issue such a health issue most infections and as i stated do not use ferrum phosphate if you have a fever so even though most infections yes as long as there is no fever angina uh, psoriatic arthritis athlete's foot eczema people who bruise easily ferrum phosphate almost all people ginger-haired people red-headed people uh, will have a ferrum phosphate issue and will need ferrum phos phosphate i think it's really a genetic issue but i've never met one that has not needed uh 
ferrum phosphate and redheaded people tend to bruise quite easily as well. Gastritis or that constant pin gas, just uncomfortable, painful pin gas that uh, so many people get. Uh, constant or even inconsistent diarrhea, uh, flatulence, people who fart a lot, especially after you eat and they're just always full of gas, always cold. Uh, iron, low iron will make you cold because it disrupts your basal metabolic temperature. Uh, glaucoma is an issue of low iron because again, oxygen carrier to, to all cells, including the cells of the eyes. People with low iron will have a lot of sensory issues. So I've already talked about sensitive skin, um, heat sensitivity as well. Heat sensitivity to the point where they will actually blister for. They can, some can blister from the heat or get heat rashes. Some, a lot of women will get heat rashes on their chest when they have heat sensitivity. That's low ferrum ph phosphate. Recurring shingles, uh, shingle outbreaks, high blood pressure, and even leukemia is linked, has a correlation, and it has had a correlation for the last 150 years to leukemia, of all things. So now let's move on, I, and I, I haven't covered them all, there's just too many uh, under the ferrum phosphate, and as I'm going to do in every one of these videos, I'll link you to that other website, which I have no affiliation with. Not everything is accurate, there are things missing, the translation is poor, but it puts together a, a bunch of, uh, one of the most complete, one of the most complete uh, series of uh, collections, sorry, of indications for deficiencies. I should actually take their lists and update them and fix them and create my own website with it. But anyway, I maybe I will do that one day when I have time. Or maybe hire one of you if anybody's offering to pull them down and create a website for me. Uh, which I would pay you for, of course. So now let's get on to the constitutional or behavioral issues that are associated with low ferrum phosphate, and it's going to sound a lot like calcium phosphate as well, and that they're going to be very, they're going to be an aggressive, they're going to be aggressive, going to be very needy, attention-seeking, will suffer from mental breakdowns because they're, they're drama queens, I'm sorry, but low iron will turn you into a drama queen, it really will. If you're not, if you weren't before, it, low iron will make you a drama queen. Uh, lack of concentration, so brain fog, uh, feels rejected, lacks discretion, demanding, fear of failure, typically highly gullible people who pretty much will believe anything they hear, especially if it, it, they want to associate with it. Poor memory, so you think of poor memory and lack of con concentration, you have brain fog. Um, lacks maturity, so immature, uh, will suffer from nightmares or night terrors. You think of children with night terrors. Many children are low in iron. Highly pessimistic people that lack self-confidence. Uh, this is ferrum phosphate. That's all I'm going to cover for today. I will add the link to that other website that will help you guys kind of get, get use as a general idea of what to look for in a ferrum phosphate deficiency. So we'll go through them one last time. We have the blue or visible veins that are present. We have it here, we have them here, we have them up here. Very pale lips, very white skin. And the lips would have also been very white. But in this case, we have rosacea as what's what may be part of a iron low iron and in this case i do believe it is so we're seeing some blue veins here the, there and there's some up there as well you can't get a good look at the lips so we move over to this photo and we see that there's inconsistent pigmentation but along the edges of the lips we're seeing that they're very pale 
we're seeing that the skin is very pale outside of the rosacea. And it's not just a contrast of the red against the skin tone. It is, that's a very light colored skin. I think we can all agree on that. And then we have a little peek at the one who does not have low iron. We're seeing some nice dark colored lips. Almost looks like she might have a little bit of makeup on or lipstick on, but she doesn't. Uh, no visible veins around the eyes or in the cheeks, around the ears, nothing. No iron issues here, none whatsoever. So she does have some acne. Some redness going on here around her nose, some inflammation. Uh, but that is a different issue that we'll talk about in another video a little bit, a little further down the line. Anyway, that's it for now. Bye-bye.